certified in teaching Ableton as well. Yeah. So how long you've been? Uh, how long you've been 2013. doing it? Twenty thirteen. 2013 and it was, was that your first program that you started uh, <laughs> no garage band was garage mm. band. yeah that was my that was my uh the drug dealer was apple <laughs> for me uh, all right okay. yeah i was like oh what is this drag and drop loops and then i started getting into the loops i started chopping up the loops and i'm like dude this is impossible to do it especially then like and then i don't know then it, it fascinated me that like oh i can go digital i can go um module stuff like that i don't know it, it just, it's so cool. The whole entire experience of like how someone got to making music. There's always something. There's always a little something that's different. Everyone else ends up having the same end result. Like I found my program yeah. and it's like, just something, just a little something that made you get into it. Mine uh-huh. was just logic. It was a free program or I'm sorry. It wasn't logic. Um, garage band. Yeah. I, it was cool. It yeah. came with uh, your Mac. Um, um, Yo, hell yeah. yeah. That's how it be. That's how yeah. it be. Hey, isn't that like the same, uh, Programming of like logic as well. Can no, it's different, definitely no? different in a lot. Yeah, of ways. yeah. Like logic it is the same. Like, it, yeah, it looks the same. Format kind of looks the same, but uh, GarageBand is just basic, bare. Has like a few basic uh, piano synthesizers, so, and you can't manipulate much in that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very like here's a taste of how to make music, or you how you can make music using a computer. Yeah. How but, to lay out music. Yeah, yeah. How to lay out music. Basically, if if you were getting into it to learn how to like drag and drop loops, and that's really all it you could do at that time, like realistically. Uh that was and then that fascinated you enough to go into logic or in, into Ableton or FL. Um, then it did its job. But Thanks. yeah. But yeah, it definitely uh not user friendly. Don't don't do it. <laughs> don't ever do it. It doesn't have a mixer, so it's like uh how do you how do you work with something that doesn't have a mix? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Things are pain in the ass. Yeah, I, yes. I haven't touched it in years. Maybe it's better. Maybe I've been sleeping. Watch is the best thing out there, and we're just <laughs> <laughs> they they figured it out. We're just all sleeping on it. What if? <laughs> you know, I have not met a lot of uh, like Reaper producers or Cubase producers. Like the most common doll that I hear from other producers is either Ableton, Alpha Studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Logic. I Logic. feel like that's like the third one that comes after those two, and then after that, I think it could be just like a, a stream of like other dolls that maybe you not heard of, like maybe in like iPhone apps, like so, like, like I know like oh, some iPhone yeah, apps you can right. just download, bro. You can just I seen a video on YouTube, some fool made a banger on an iPhone app, bro. Well, like, what you, kind of banger? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. actually like uh, like a festival banger, like a festival banger. Oh, yeah, really? like, really? like it was it wasn't like a, a dubstep rhythm. It was like a like a. Like a really good solid 2016 festival banger. Oh, okay. Like, you know, so like. Those are the kind of bangers that you could now make on iPhone apps, which I think that's incredible. I didn't like, know we were there yet. Nah, we are. We've been, we've, we've been, been past there. that shit, I guess now, because this video came out like two years ago. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jeez. I guess we've already been. Uh, well, back in the day, the Gorillas tried to make like it wasn't a good album, whatever oh, it was yeah. an EP, but they didn't just to prove a point that, that you can make music anywhere. They but like the photos that you would find are like a thousand adapters that go into an iPad. And they literally made an entire album or an EP. I forget which one it was, but they made one iPhone, only right? using an iPad. Yeah, oh, iPad. Only an know. iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I, that. Me- yeah, I remember. Actually, it's weird. I normally wouldn't remember that. I just thought about the other day because I had like all my adapters. I have a graveyard of like everything. If you ask any of my friends, I have one of everything. I just, I, I am always prepared. But it's like. I started connecting them and I'm like, I having fun. Right. But it got to a point where I like had a tower and I was like, why does this look familiar? And I was like, Oh, the gorillas, they already did this, but they also made an album and they probably made some money off it. So they won. For sure. Made some money off of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is wild, bro. Like just like having you here on the loose, the temple podcast, the spotlight podcast, yeah. bro. How you feeling, dude? I'm feeling good. Thank you for having me. Popsicle in the building, man. Hey, let's go. Hey. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of, it's interesting because I think it's been a couple of years since I've actually came across uh, your name. And I oh, think it was cool. on SoundCloud. And then uh, before we started recording, this, uh, I had mentioned, I had seen you, I had discovered you around the same time, discovered like Brando. Yeah. And there's another name too. I don't, I th- I'm pretty sure you know this, this particular project, Bubbles. I don't actually. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. Because I feel like he, they he, um, that pr- that project falls around, along the same line of like, that and an uh, anonymity, like on SoundCloud, oh. like, it doesn't really show like their their face or whatever. And uh, I just think it's crazy how like at that from that moment, like a couple years later, you know, to have uh, someone like yourself come through who's had collabs with like a lot of dope ass names, 
Ulusao, Troll Face. I mean, the list goes down. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's incredible, dude. And like, yeah. Uh, it's, did you say that this is your first podcast? This is my know? first podcast. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So cool. yeah. I'm stoked about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah Y'all just seem really amazing. I, like I was telling you off uh, camera, I just watched all uh, a, a good majority of all your like content. I saw that you had multiple podcasts and y'all have evolved your set so much that I'm like, this is not just someone I want to be a part, like do something with, but also like be a part of That's as well. Because right. y'all aren't being stopped by anyone. You are going gun hole and it, it is Thanks. so cool. I love this. I love seeing evolution like that. That just go, go, go. That's cool. That's inspirational, to be honest. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate that. It, it feels good coming from you, honestly, from like seeing your evolution. Seeing God, my ego is big enough. You don't you have to guys. keep feeding into it. <laughs> I mean, like, the, I, we, I feel like we just have to like give that respect right now. I appreciate that. Thank without you. Without someone like you, there's no people like us. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Well, and that's why we're a special niche of people that hopefully make another person smile and then continuously just keep doing that until the world is not as bad as it is, which eh, you know, fingers crossed one day, like a couple thousand years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll be yeah. alive too. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. I'll be here. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll be here. Yeah. But on some real SoundCloud shit though. Oh yeah. Like real go. talk. Like if you guys know Lucy Temple, you already know this is on some SoundCloud shit. I mean, let's go. You know, it was right for us to have to bring Popsicle in the building. Man. Oh yeah. So, I love SoundCloud, man. Yeah, bro. So total snob. I love it. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming through. So <laughs> thank you. Um, the way we start off these podcast here at the spotlight. Okay. Yeah, uh, we do something called quick hits, bro. So it's like a time questionnaire. Oh, I'll okay. ask you a couple of fun questions. You answer them. Don't think about it too much, and we'll time you too. So Okay, let's do it. Yeah, bro. So it's nothing like e, e square minus whatever the fuck. Oh, whatever calculus good. teaches you nowadays. Is that good. calculus? I don't even know, bro. But I'm, <laughs> I don't know. It's I'll, math. I'm, I'm stupid. Bro. Yeah, my phone's across the room too, so <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> All right, bro. So this is quick hits. So I'm going to start off this question. The minute I ask this question, timer will run. All right? So Got it. Don't think about it too long. Whatever comes up in your head. So we'll roll All right. That, okay? Let's run it. All right, here we go, bro. <laughs> so here's the first question of quick hits. So. What's your social media handle? Oh, at Popsicle Music. P-O-P-S-I-K-L-M-U-S-I-C. Favorite DJ software? Oh, software. I guess Serato for turntables and then for, uh, any, I guess, live currently is Pioneer. We'll get back to that. Okay. A age you started at? A uh, age uh, 22, uh, 22, 22. Favorite subgenre of dance music? Uh, Future bass. I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite streaming platform, music streaming platform. Still to this day, SoundCloud. There we go. Uh, favorite BPM. Oh, that's not a fair question. <laughs> uh, uh, 100, 100, 100, 100, I'll say 100. 100. 100, 100 mm. I like 100. I don't think we've gotten that before. Uh, special skill. Special skill. Uh, I wear this and think I'm funny. That's mentally something. Uh, that's a special skill. <laughs> I believe Special it. skill? I don't know. I, I do a lot of things. I'm a jack of all trades. Bet. Uh, first festival. Uh, Miami Ultra for j the debut of Jack U. Okay, uh, why? Uh, because of Jack U. Bet, okay. Yeah, that's it. I've mm. never been to another festival since. What is your dream mm. festival? Dream festival to play at? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess if it was like, if it was a homey thing, definitely Lost Lands because all my friends are there. They're playing. They're already been playing. Uh, but like, I guess for validation for myself, I guess mentally, which is weird. Uh, Maybe like an ultra or like uh, EDC Las Vegas, because I feel like once you're on one of those bigger stages, it's like, oh, this is real. <laughs> There's a lot of people down there that they know my song. That's crazy. Yeah, and okay. it's 8 p.m. Like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> like how came why? <laughs> Y'all woke up way sooner than I would have. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, one of those two, probably for validation, but for homie, for like a big homie fest, probably like a Lost Lands or something like that. Okay. Sure. All right. That's respectable. Respectable answers. Yeah. All right. That's quick hits. That's oh, I loved it. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. fast. Oh, that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. quick. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, painless. <laughs> literally, literally, yeah. Painless. Dang. Painless, yeah. bro. Thanks, thanks. Just like that, dude. Uh, hey, but going back to the uh, favorite DJ software, you mentioned Serato, Hell and yeah. you mentioned for turntables. You run, you can run on turntables. Hell too? yeah, my my teacher, like I had a personal teacher. Uh, D shout out DJ Shifty, uh, taught me back at Dubspot back in the day in New York. He oh, was my personal man. instructor. Yeah. So I learned about, yeah, he's a DMC. Wait, DJ okay. Shifty? Yeah. Taught me Wait, to, really? Yeah. And I was no. only inspired because of A-Track. I only got into DJing he because of A-Track. Yeah. Yo, that's dope as fuck. Hey, we got our turntable oh, right there, bro. Yeah. So we're going to have to run some scratch samples real oh, quick. Oh, let's go. It's been many of a year, but let's go. Oh, bet. Yeah. Right, so I had to sell some things before I got here, but I'm down. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm bust out these old fingies. Let's get it going. Yeah, those, that's like my preferred way of DJing. Oh, I, there is a... 
physical, like a touch. I don't know how to really describe it. You have to do it. Being able to control and manipulate a record. EDM, yeah. hip hop does not matter. The It's like driving, okay, automatic versus manual stick shift. That, that is 100% how I, I bro, I've categorize I've never that. heard anyone mm. like explain it like that. And that makes so much sense. It's 100% that way. So much sense to me. The issue is we just never got any further in that technology. So as we wanted it nice and loud. Thank you, Excision. Uh, it made a really loud place uh, to go crazy and do the EDMing on. Uh, also, the the needle would bounce. Yeah. A lot of bouncing. And then we'd have to get weighted needles. And then you can probably look Character up anything needles. A-Tracks ever said. You're at a point where the, the, the needle's weighted down so much that it's destroying your, your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that wax, I mean, for people like them, they probably have a bunch. They have their, they have their sponsors and stuff. But just knowing that you probably can't use that more than a couple of times yeah. always cycling it out and yeah. then you know it's also like oh it's the guy that uh or, or girl that does the turntables we have to make sure we have turntables there for them they just can't be the easy ones that could just do pioneers <laughs> and just do pioneers and let's cdjs and let's just do the cdjs and it's like no nah, man like being forced to use an, an industry standard because before pioneer was a thing we only had turntables yeah like technology was not there yet. Granted, I love the progression of technology and I love what Pioneer has done for everyone to be as accessible, including their program, which is free with Record Box. That's a lot of things, you know, it's not cheap it to get good at uh, turntablism. Nope. You know, like it just it's very expensive and Damn, maintenance. True. Also maintenance. Yeah, that's that's an early one. But yeah, it's manual versus automatic. Did you start yeah. off uh turntables? Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. Huh. Did Mm. Did you go straight into DVS or were you doing like carrying around crates and stuff? Uh, like no, I went directly for com- from computer. Yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. Cool. So I'm guessing you went to Serato. Yeah, that's yeah. why Serato. I mean, I liked what Tractor did via Fex, but at the same time, uh, again, I'm always surrounded by people that were always like it's either the producers that are super sound designy or like elitist, or the other half where it's like not that. But yeah, so. Answer your question. Yeah, I did computers and I did uh, just straight up uh, Serato and Tractor had too many effects. And yeah, stuff like that. The the thing that got me with the between those two is Serato is very user friendly. Where Tractor it's is beautiful. like, it has so many back doors in Tractor. And if so I was many- a house DJ and was just doing house, and I'm gonna get flamed on this, but I feel like that is very good for you. That is track Tractor is good for you if you are just doing house music. I believe it. Yeah. Because you have all the effects in the... I, I still, to this day, think Tractor still holds the number one spot for best effects designed by some of the best industry engineers that you can get in a DJ software. Serato's not there yet, but so know what Serato does have? It has the video. Um, uh, what was it? The, yeah, the VJing built into it. I mean, Figure basically ran TerraVision off that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's why it was so perfectly synced up. I mean, I'll give that to Figure. Like, he really figured it out with how to manipulate that. I think he also does turntables. Figure? Figure. I feel like he may have done turntables. I may be to. making that up. I may be making that up. I feel like he did though. I think, I, th- I want to say I remember, I think so too. Back in the day, yeah, early like back on in like 2010 ish, I think. Oh yeah. During his blow time. up. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. But, I'm pretty uh, sure. But yeah, turntables are sick. Dan, now I'm thinking about all these shows that I've gone to. And if the setup was turntables, I wonder the rest of the lineup. I wonder how they'd be like managing that shit. They'd I'm be thinking so about that mad. shit, bro. Because, because like for me, uh, <laughs> do it at a low end. <laughs> like right, right, as I was just thinking, like damn, bro. Like someone, uh, like like for uh, a side of this, uh, I also do something called low end entertainment, oh, nice. and like we throw shows. Like we just book Michael Sparks for next week. Oh wow, Good yeah. Boy. So like oh, we're. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I like to I like I like to like put people in the group chat like and they'll ask me questions like oh what, what's the setup and I was like damn like I always wondered like how people would react if I was like you know what we're just gonna run all techniques twelve hundreds MK threes fucking uh, make sure yeah. you have your laptop on yeah you. make sure you bring your own needles <laughs> make sure you bring your own vinyls well see that that, that used to be a thing that, that, that yeah yeah that, that was the industry yeah. standard bring your own Facts. stuff yeah yes yeah. yeah. like I remember uh like I started off Serato yeah oh oh I started off controller virtual. And then, like, the majority of, like, my first five years was just, like, Serato, like, getting my own gear. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to some of these club gigs and some of these, uh, like, house parties and, like, the, some people would bring their own pairs yeah. of turntables. And sometimes, like, they'll let, sometimes, they'll, like, if they're staying there, they'll, like, sometimes be like, oh, yeah, you can use my shit. But a lot of times, like, I, I had, like, customized vinyls, too. And so I was like, yeah, I'd rather use my own shit. And, like, that's, that was the oh, thing. Yeah, like, it wasn't, yeah. like, you bring your own, you're just being your good. The, like, Rekordbox and, like, CJs, like, they're, they're still hella expensive or not that accessible. 
so Serato was the thing, uh, or virtual DJ or tractor, or whatever tractor, it was. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, you had to bring your own vinyl, your yep. own uh, vinyl DS, needle. D- DVS, your own DVS, the vi- the Serato vinyl, your needles, the slip mats that goes under the vinyls. And uh, I, I think that was your it. Laptop, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, your laptop. Yeah, oh, and and then okay. like and you mentioned maintenance. People don't understand that they those don't. these those, a needle, and then especially the needles that I was using. I mean, the Shures and four four sevens like those are $50 like fifty sixty for a needle. Or how about keeping your court your quartz your uh, what is it? it is right quartz technology, making sure the platter quartz, was yeah. always in sync. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that down to that. That's so much money. So Keep that consistent. Much. If you're actually using them religiously. Yeah, you're going to wear and tear that thing pretty fast. But again, it's just like a manual car. It's like a fixer-upper or just like, that's your baby. It's like your your, your your ride, your car or something like that, right? So it's like, I want to make sure that it's always the fastest. It's always tuned. When I drive past anybody, they go, oh, shit. Yeah. I want, But when I'm using a, um, a, a record player, right? I just, I want to feel that, but with my hands. Yeah. I want to be like, ooh, I can, I can control this. This is smooth. Yeah, yeah. I just don't get that with uh, CDJs. I just never have. I, it, the pl- I need a platter that moves. I'm sorry. Like, it is really fun to plug and play, but I mean, I wonder how many of these people that are currently on the main stages of younger of age currently would be able to just be handed that and be like, oh yeah, have fun. But also, I could be eating my own words and they'd be prodigies at it, which is cool because that's how I became a, like into it is because I saw a record player, not a CDJ. CDJ yeah. was like, that's a lot of buttons. And I was like, I, I'm familiar with what that is. Mm. And I want to learn about that. Less buttons and I could really spend more time on, on something more simpler. But I did not know about the maintenance when I first got into it. So that's a whole other story. Man, yeah. I don't think most people know about the maintenance until you start getting into it and you start realizing like, hey, I might have to get a needle in another mm-hmm. two weeks or so. Mm-hmm. And then in another month or two, I might have to get more. And then that's when it comes to, yeah, bro, like, I probably won't let you use my needles. Bring your own. <laughs> I don't know if I trust you with mine. Like, you're going to let it, like, yeah. slip off the platter yeah. and you're just going to break. Yeah, no, I got, I got it. I'm pretty sure needle owners have all had their fair share of, okay, like, well, I'll let you. And then, oh, no, nah, bro, like, you, sh- you didn't bring your own needles. I'm sorry, bro. Like, you're not spending. I mean, you're yeah, going to have to run like, internal, fam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll, you'll always not, you most likely always see the transition to where it's like, okay, turntables. And then after a while, it's like, oh, fuck, I ain't trying to like, I ain't trying to do the whole maintenance thing. I'm going to just switch to a controller, a controller or switch over to just going CD or, or just going uh, into some other like DJ gear that's not having me to like consistently have like every month, maybe. If you got a constant gigs, every two, three months, you're most likely like buying new needles because again, it just depends how much you're DJing, you're using your gear. But yeah. if you're constant, if you're, every week, if you're consistently using turntables, like every two, three months, you're going to see yourself like maybe going across needles or i know sometimes too when you get turntables you know you like to get very customizable so maybe you maybe just want to get another extra pair of tur- uh, vinyl yeah maybe, you know or you just could. other stuff you like really good uh you just never know with turntables that's kind of why i love the two is because you could i love to customize this like if i play any video game and i'm like can i customize my whatever i'm playing as to like the mm, fullest right. extent yeah, yeah, yeah. so i like, kind of like that too like you can do so much i mean how about i remember i cheesed over when someone had like a gold plated uh, 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 was a technique. Yeah, I was cheesing. I was like, "This is the." Qu-. It was so simple, but I was like, "This is this is so sick." I remember I seen DJ Craze have those for the first time, the gold plated techniques, because he won like a DMC champion or something like that. That's sick. And I see him came. He used to drop like ru- DJ routine videos, and once I seen that, and he also had a gold plated uh, Z2 mixer as well. And Ooh, once I seen it, see? I was like, "I'm telling you, it's that." Like gold, it's kind of sick. And I was like, once I and that was the first mixer I seen that had cue points on it on the actual mixer. I was actually stoked about that. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, All right, I want that mixer. Mm-hmm. That, that was like my ideal mixer. And then legit, I got it, and I never wanted another mixer. It's like, a really oh. great mixer. Yeah, I feel for like rain time, it, it, it was rain that did that. Uh, was that rain or was that tractor? tractor? It was tractor. Okay, yeah, I remember rain tractor. doing some sort of competitive thing, but I don't think yeah, they got, had the got six, off. the six TLM, the TTM fifty seven, yeah, yeah, TTM fifty seven, oh, yeah, yeah. sixty two, the sixty eight, yeah, they got the little mm-hmm. family going now on. Now they're at seventy two. They're not giving up on it. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that. There's I hope. mean, it's a reliable like mixer. That know? is also true. Yeah. yeah. And it was one of the first mixers to incorporate having the sound card inside the mixer mm-hmm. to mm. adapt it to the DVS. I remember, yeah, my uh, I was bringing around my Serato card. Such yeah, a I bitch. mean, that was just one more thing. I, I used to, I didn't have crates of records, but I used to bring a, a milk crate 
uh-huh. to all my gigs like back in the day. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I had like my Serato was yeah. in there, my mixer. All the cables. Yeah, all the cables. Sometimes <laughs> I got lazy and just left like two or three in there. So it'd be a little bit quicker to fucking <laughs> yeah. plug right in, plug and play. Yeah, yeah I love that. That's what's up. And then uh, when that was all going on, uh, is that when Popsicle popped into the picture? Or when did the whole Popsicle event uh, uh, The whole Popsicle thing actually started just randomly on Skype. Uh, oh, it was okay. I, yeah, it was, I was doing my own thing. Uh, kind of, I, I'm a big skateboarder. So I've been skating a majority of my life. I was always around skaters and stuff. So like, I was always around music, but it's so for me to do this is always kind of like a contradicting in a way because mm-hmm skating is always about being real and you know if you didn't you know prove it to me that you did it show me the clip show me the footage type of thing you can't fake skating you know that's just what it is um but then i you know so i busted my butt learning production and um the ins and outs of ableton and then the ins and outs of how to dj and trying to create something for me and it just didn't work out at all and i did a couple of years of this for sure and I, i wasn't ready to quit but i was just a little bummed out right so I had some friends that were kind of starting to come up on the up and up, or at least people knew their names to some degree. One of them being uh, my buddy, Jesse Subtronics, and uh, which is, a, he's a small producer right now. I think he's going to get bigger. Give, give him a few more months. I think he's going to be a little bit bigger. He's That's really good, though. <laughs> I, was not, no, I was about to say. <laughs> really yeah, good. No, Shit, if you small that, like, well, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was just did. I'll be real with you. True. Jesse or Subtronics and uh, Sudden Death will be light years bigger than I think anyone will ever believe i'm not even trying to put them on a pedestal it's just their progression right now and the teams they have behind them are so they themselves are innovators and creatives through and through so i think you know not to sidetrack that but yeah, yeah I, no, think I, think, I think their fan base is, yeah they're like, very talk, cool. like honestly their fan bases can like prove that exactly it, it, it comes down to the fan bases uh, if the fan base can definitely put their all uh support into a project uh the uh, artists don't uh, gotta tell you that the fan base can like obviously just tell you that after mm-hmm. that yeah, absolutely like for sure so yeah okay that's yeah up. so i was like on skype and whatnot and it was subtronics and uh uber and i don't know i just saw like i was a big marshmallow fan but then out of nowhere i saw another dj come out of that uh, named slushy which then i was like this is interesting i wasn't upset nor mad i was just like huh he only has like five thousand followers refreshes soundcloud he's at 20k now what's going on here? Is it a bot account? It wasn't. It wasn't a bot account though. It was, um, I just got to look at the bio, which most people don't do. But I, the one time I did, I was like, oh, they're managed by the exact same people that Marshmallow is managed by. And I'm like, oh, this makes sense. Now I'm upset. And I was like, I'm busting my butt um, and I'm getting nowhere and rebrand. And now you're somebody. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to rebrand and do this as a joke. Um, in my head. So I thinking all that. And then I say out loud, I'm like, you know, like I'm just going to be a popsicle just because it's the least serious thing I've ever thought about in my life. Like that's not a threatening thing. Um, it was actually funny. Cause I think I had a bowl of ice cream. So I should have probably said ice cream at the time, but my brain goes popsicle. And, um, cause you know, like I'm, I tried to make like the Deadpool esque thing where I'm, I'm very like, uh, I acknowledge what I am. I know what I am. I know what I was doing at that time. So like before slushy even really became slushy at that time, I was like, okay, y'all and you down with this meme because I'm down to go full send and get at least five good laughs out of this. And then I'm going to dip and then that'll be done with music. Cause like I, that was my, my segue. I was like, I'm going to have a good laugh. I never plan on having a helmet. I never planned creating a character that I actually enjoy playing and being genuine with it. It feels like an extension of myself. Um, but yeah, so I had all the homies like Dak Daniels uh, day one. I had Space Race, uh, you know, like the song Akira, Space Race. And then I, you know, Choppa Dunks, uh, Subtronics, uh, Uber. I, at some point I had like um, uh, Ula Seal eventually got led in onto the joke and everything. So I had a bunch of people sliding into the DMs like, oh, are you Ghost Produce? How many people are part of this project? Like, this is so cool. This, or this is so yeah. funny. Or people saying like, you got like, you, you got, you got some cojones. Like, to doing some doing something like this, you know who you're going against. I'm like, they're people too, right? Yeah. They've got more money than me. And if I make 20 bucks out of this, that's kind of tight. But if I don't make anything, I get to go to bed laughing. And that's funny. So my whole thing was, I'm just going to be everything this industry isn't, which is, I acknowledge that I, what I am, I know what I'm doing. I acknowledge that I, uh, 
I don't know. I just lean into it. I love leaning into stuff like that. And I like a good joke. I've always been a comedy person. I, you know, fun fact, hate horror, mu- anything but horror, hate horror, movies, comics, you name it. Well, maybe, maybe not comedy. I actually, no, that's a lie. I like that. And then horror anime is pretty good too. But real life stuff, it gets too real. I don't like it. Not a big fan. I like to laugh. That's what I like to do. And I think I missed that from what I was doing in music. It was a lot of serious. It was a lot of everyone around you. It's like, who do you know? And, you know, and it's still to this day, it is like, you know, to get where you need to be. And then money this or doing this in the back of that to get to that and this, that, that, and that. And it's just like, dude, no one smiles during this. This is really sad. Mm. I hate that no one smiles. And I'm, and it was freaky, especially during COVID. Like we didn't see each other's mouths if you're out in public. Nice. I think the first time I saw someone smile, I almost had a tear to my eye type thing. I'm like, I forgot you people can have emotions again. So, I mean, that was the same concept. I'm like, maybe if I can make one person laugh or at least take the music seriously so they can have some sort of like uh, sustenance, like they can really come back to like, oh, maybe I hate, <laughs> maybe I hate the brand, but the music, I, I'll come back for the music or I hate the music, but the brand's funny. And I want to do, I want that. I, I wanted to give them the option, not just, I am big, serious person that makes music and fear me and rhythm. Like, you know, or, or, the, or when I was coming up, I mean, rhythm wasn't even like fully fledged yet. And, yeah. you know, it was trap, like festival trap and trap music. Like I said, uh, one of my favorite songs, I memed on it all the time, but like uh, one of my good friends, Matt Space Race, you know, he made Akira, which is one of the biggest was, I guess at that time was the biggest, one of the biggest uh, what are they, uh, trap bangers. It was very, had a lot of Space cool Race. Elements. That's the part. Uh, they, they have the base cult thing, right? Yes. He they runs. Finish. Yeah. He runs base cult. Okay. Um, actually, he was just down here. I haven't talked to him in like almost two years and hit me up last night and he was like, yo, I'm playing in San Diego. You want to come through? I'm like, oh, bro, I just got, I just, I'm dead tired. Like I just, you know, I, I've been, I've been traveling a lot. So I'm like, oh, okay, well <laughs> I'll try. And it was just really nice just seeing everyone again. Um, it was really cool. Yeah. So he's bass Colt, and uh, I think he has a few other sub labels of that as well. But um, yeah, I just liked the meme, but he was the first one. He was technically my first manager. Okay. I have had a lot of sort of, managers um throughout my career as well so he was definitely one of my favorites that like really put their time and effort into my brand and uh wanted to laugh and wanted not so much any it wasn't even a meme anymore at that point so i kind of like that's like a little early spectrum of popsicle it goes way deeper than that and i'm not your podcast is not long enough for it (laughs) (laughs) maybe i don't know i mean i mean i'm down one to a three hour one oh yeah let's go i got words so so when you started popsicle like you mentioned like you just kind of just started as like just like for laughs you said, you said i just wanted to smile like smile like for, like you said you said like in a measurement of like yeah, i just want to get like my five laughs in and then dip yeah. did, did you feel that like that was like the expect like you personally when you started that was that like the expense uh, the expectancy of the project no. for popsicle when you went in or did you feel like oh no nah, i'm gonna try to see if i could like and, yeah uh, let's just see if this project could go on for maybe like a couple months or maybe like a couple years. Or- well, yeah. So that, that that's sort of what happened. Yeah. So I, if a lot of stuff runs through my brain. I, my brain works aggressively very fast. So I'm like, I'm, I'm always like doing almost like chess in my head with almost everything, even like waking up in the morning. What am I doing? The first three things kind of thing, like which, which the most optimized way to get my day going and really get me out of bed and get it, you know, gun ho. But um, yeah, so I didn't at that point, I was like, I was just more frustrated that, EDM became this thing where I thought it was like this, like beautiful thing uh, that it wasn't like all the other genres. And then, you know, you start getting into EDM or anything music related. And if you start taking even 1% seriously, you start noticing that this entire, it's, it's a business. Yeah. It's absolutely a business. Facts. There's money to be made. There is money to be made. (laughs) When someone says, if they're loaded and they say, Oh, I just do it for the music, then donate all that money. If you're not in for this, for the music, Donate everything. Live on the streets. Show me that you're real about this. I mean, maybe not to that extreme. I was, yeah, I was about to say, how am I supposed to do that, fam? I mean, here, <laughs> give me your laptop. I'll start right there. I'll, I'll start right there. No, Gosh, but you know, what? do do something. Do something to prove to me that it's not just words. Because yeah. everyone says, "Oh, get into music." There needs to be a disclaimer on music or modeling or anything in the creative arts. This is a risk, and if you take this super seriously, just know that you're gonna. Find out things that you don't want to. You don't want to know. There's a charm. And when that charm gets knowing. faded, I mean, mental illness is real. Like, I am a victim of it as well. Like, once I started getting deeper and deeper and I start overthinking things, 
it, then it starts affecting the art. It's not even about the art at that point anymore. So then that's why this brand was, it became important to me. Mm. It, it came from, I just want to laugh for the moment. And then I sat down and, you know, Uber made me my little popsicle guy. And um, we were goofing around with ideas all day or all night. It was like super late in the, or early in the morning or something like that. It was just fun. And we're all just kind of jostling around. And I started feeling happy <laughs> in the music industry. It was very weird. It was very conflicting. But again, it was me trying to recalibrate my brain, being like, this doesn't have to be big, tough guy or edgy. Like, I'm too cool for school. Like, mm. no, like you're allowed to smile. Like, it's, it is okay to smile. And I think I, at that point in my life, I forgot about that. Like, I genuinely just, I, cause the charm, the lust and the shiny stuff of EDM disappeared for me, which was sad. Um, I feel you on but that. But then this, this mailbox, this homie right here, one in my head. Um, yeah. You just kind of showed me there was, there's a chance. I mean, I don't know what the future holds for me, but I sure, I uh, sure know that I'm going to be smiling and. I'll have my down days, I'll have my up days, but I know that I'll have more more up days, you know, being happy than I will be sad. That is, I think, the one thing I didn't expect this project to do for me. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of like the, the back end. Damn, you guys are my therapists now? Let's yeah. go. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, what I like about the whole, like, pop school brand mm-hmm. uh, and going back to all that right there, uh, putting on the, the mask helmet, mm-hmm. I think, like you said, it was something for you to just have a laugh at. Mm-hmm. And because of that, maybe it helped you, like, um, have more fun with the music as well. Like, have fun Absolutely. with the whole project, like, in a whole, you know? Because if you're just, like, trying to uphold a certain style of branding, because some people's branding is, I have to look cool. I have to look good and at all And for times. some people, it does work. And Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, and there's nothing wrong no, with that branding. No, there's nothing wrong but with it. Absolutely. It, I'm, I'm, I know for for a fact, it takes a lot out of someone to Absolutely. uphold that. And if you're not cut for that, if you're someone like, I'm pretty sure maybe this uh, popped out more of your personality than maybe your, your last I mean, project I enjoyed or YouTube. something. I mean, I come from the era of like when YouTube was the Wild West, you know, like yeah. Smosh and like, Remember the song, the song shoes and, you know, uh, you know, like all those, all those old, just like, it was dumb and silly skit comedy was there. It was thriving. And it was still good. It was so good. And, you know, I didn't have to tell my parents, like, I'm, I'm watching like, I don't know, the Smosh uh, music videos, uh, sex ed, where it's like, I don't know, it was, I think set my friends on fire were were the ones that sang Mm. or did it. I don't know, but it was just like, it was so funny and dumb, but also good. And I think that just got me going. Like, I always like, I always wanted to be like a, not, I wanted to be like a, like an actor of some sense, but I didn't really want to do it. It's kind of like those things like, oh, I would love to be a multi-billionaire, but I don't know where the hell to start with being like Jeff Bezos type of rich, you know, like, right. but, you know, I, I like the flirt with the idea. That's how I was with uh, this. I like acting, but I kind of like that though. That's kind of like my thing. I enjoy putting on a persona that I guess is already in my head. You're right. Magnifies it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, this allows me to be myself. Very odd. I should probably see a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can come see us. You can come yeah, see us. I might need to talk to somebody well, about this. Though. You don't got to go through insurance with us, though. Oh, you okay, know? sick. Oh, yeah, All right, how much? <laughs> Take cash? Uh, You're like, oh, no, safe Bitcoin, moon, safe dog. Moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you can make your own crypto coin like, for like 10, 20 bucks on Fiverr. You can do any, you can you, you can pretty can much anything, anything on Fiverr, Fiverr, bro. Like legit, hey, hey, hey uh, Zion Don coin, run that shit right you now. You should do it. Do uh, it. Lose the temple, temple coin. The temple, temple coin. The temple coin. The temple coin. Ooh, I'm a done. temple coin. Damn, yeah, I, I'd invest at least like forty five cents into that right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and with the with, uh, with the whole like pop school uh, helmet mask thing. Uh-huh. Uh, so how do you go about that, man? It's like, do you, everywhere do you go, and especially like when you're like. Uh, Traveling, like going on planes or going on the road, because mm-hmm. uh, and I also want to thank you for even like uh, allowing us to see like who's being. Oh that. yeah, I mean because so, y'all, like, y'all signed some NDAs, so, like we're yeah, yeah, I feel you, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, so you know, we're cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm like the paperwork type of thing. You yeah, know? I mean us you. too, us too. I mean it's just Everything. official, and that's another reason why I like you guys because you, you you gave me that official vibe as well. But um, yeah, no, awesome. to answer your question, like I remember I did a music video with uh, Cherney uh, in the desert. And I knew maybe four out of like maybe the 60 or 50 people that were there. 
So I'm like, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> and I'm, oh, I'm always just paranoid at anyway. Okay. Left this or, thing on in the desert for eight and a half hours to yeah. film it. Yeah. So it kind of depends like where you're going, whether you'll mm-hmm. still keep them. Like, okay. So let's say if you're going uh, out of state for a gig. Okay. Like, would you, would you wear that? Like, I have through, a ski mask. Air, airport? Oh, you have a ski mask? Yeah. Okay. And cool. I just kind of like, cause I blend in with anyone that's at an airport or, and, or yeah. a train station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get into the car, you put on the, you know, you just slide that on. Be like, oh, what car are you in? You always get, you always been told that when you're getting off a airplane or whatever, or wherever the case may be, because you have transportation. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm in the the silver Chevy or I'm in the Lincoln over there. Okay, sick. Okay. I gives me five minutes to grab this thing, put it on my head and get into the car. Mm. Yeah. It's very ski masky. Um, if they want to sign a non-disclosure agreement, then they, it is on them. And then I feel comfortable because then I have nothing to lose at that point. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I live by NDAs. For sure, for sure. My buddy, uh, visibly, um, it, so I've been spending a lot of time in VR chat, actually, built and learning that entire culture. Definitely want to talk about that. We will you. definitely get into that because that is a thing that if y'all want to know where the real future is going to be, I'm putting my mar- all my marbles into that Man. at the moment. But for yeah, sure. he used to joke about it. He's like, yo, no one even knows. He's he's actually blown up on TikTok right now. Um, and he's like, yo, no one gets to talk to him without his helmet. I'm like, yeah, it's just what it is. Like, Has anyone caught you slipping? No. Nah. No, not even that? once. I, I have. If you go to my car right now, extra shoes, extra shirts, extra jeans. <laughs> oh, you name damn, it, bet. any time of the week. Also, sometimes I sweat because I, you know, I try to be physically fit, and I also need new <clears throat> things to wear. So, there's that. All right, I want to ask: when you're playing at a show, you're yeah. headlining, you're playing direct support. Yeah. Um, are those situations usually with your mask on throughout the whole event, or like do you usually play, or before you play, like you put mm-hmm. you, you like switch out into your thing and mm-hmm. then when you play get off you switch out and then you, you're like you know you're back to your uh it like, you're not hiding yourself, on the like... green room i would say if it's mm, a very okay. like if it's like let's say it's neon i'm gonna make up a, a fake fake lineup here yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's neonics um sub antics solium sound sudden death subtronics and me as the, the opener uh I could take my helmet off knowing that every single one of those people would never say a thing. Okay. Right. Anyone else that I don't directly know or consider like of like family of any sense, I will definitely leave this on. And I don't have a problem leaving it on because it's almost like Instagram and Twitter and TikTok friendly. It's like, who's Gumby over there? I want to get a photo. You don't even need to know who I am. Right, yeah, 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 and yeah. I'm content for you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not about making content or creating content. It's about writing whatever content's already there. So if I have a room that's a normal room, but the weirdo that's wearing a mask of I'm going to snag a photo real quick because maybe that'll get me five more likes or yeah. something silly. You don't need to know me. I mean, um, some Disney star did that, did that to me. I forgot what, what her name was, but she's a DJ. now. I think she goes by like cosmic. So she's like an old Disney star. So Bella Thorne, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. Yeah. I was on her, on her story once. And she's like, I forgot what she said, but it was like what? something snappy. Like, you couldn't afford marshmallow? I'm like, nah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Damn. I'm like, oh, okay. Damn, bro. Shit. Fucking but I was like, okay, but true though. Question, <laughs> do you get like mistaken for Gumby a lot? Is Sometimes. It- I mean, I think I lean into it because Gumby is such an old thing made of clay and he's yeah. just always smiling. He's he's dead inside and I, I also feel dead inside. You just take this thing <laughs> off. It's just a puddle of depression that falls out. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Until you, until let's see, let's see. Gumby, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I can see why." You yeah, say Gumby. you know, if you don't know who I am directly, then yeah, it it, it could happen that way. So oh, that makes sense. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, so going with like the popsicle brand, uh, I feel like there could have been there definitely could have been a choice for you to like not stay true, like truly anonymous. Like you could have just like been like, "Oh, I do wear this during performance and off like this who I am." Mm-hmm. So like, what made uh, so like uh, where some factors that led you into like staying completely anonymous, where you know people don't really know who you are, like in terms of, like the face. Did you you didn't want to like deal with like people particularly or like what yeah, was, like, the... I guess it was just again I come from like a like East Coast skateboarding type of thing where it's like the people that you knew were already in your pack, like you're skating with them all day. Like we didn't really. I don't really know how to answer that. I guess that's a weird one. Um, hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just one of those things where you just kind of keep to yourself. So I think the body here likes likes that. Likes that home body. Can sit at a computer all day. 
you know, do a little physical activity, you know, something like that. But this guy, he loves the limelight. Loves it. Oh my God. He's, he's a, Ooh, man. If this homie can make an only fans right now, he would type thing. <laughs> but this one right here, like I, I like chill. I like relax. Like I come from that, that atmosphere of like, you know, just, you know, your homies and you know, we're, we're cool. That's why I said, when I put this thing on, I can be that outgoing. Like more extroverted. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So do you feel like the mask kind of brings on more of like the extrovert? For sure. I mean, if it's you? business related, I, I can flip that switch pretty well. Um, okay. But this definitely helps quite a bit. By chance. And I don't even know why. I was, I've, Yo, hit I, me with it. I know you're going to say, I already know what I can see. The smile you on your Gemini? face. I'm not a Gemini. Okay. I, I was I'm, about to what? say, if you were, bro. No. Like, Hell no. We're not. No. Cool. My doctor just says I'm not a No. Bro, I'm sorry, I've been hanging psychotic. out with too many no people idea. that are into Hell crystals no. and shit. No, I'm sorry, a Leo, man. I'm Our podcast really is going to have a segment for just like EDM horoscopes, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, if you're Aries, you'd love Zodiac Britain. Sign. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's, that's oh, yeah. You love trance. You're like a Gemini, huh? Yeah, you're and a we're going to send out horoscopes in, uh, today. Today, you should listen to Alinium, blah, 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 oh, because yeah. you are oh, Leo. Oh, my God. Yeah, is you can't a keep, thing? You can't keep <laughs> Aries at the same stage. If it's not a thing, you need to make it a thing. And uh, yes. no. <laughs> Every Wednesday, EDM horoscopes. If you like excision, you're cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Capricorns Next. don't eat at festivals. They just, do, they just like, you know, don't eat. <laughs> oh, they, mm. Uh, we're getting some dark territory. Right. <laughs> My bad. Oh, no, that's cool. No, no, we are we're already on this shit. I'm yeah, only no, saying that Gemini's have two personalities. So you're saying mm. you're just no? I think I genuinely I do have <laughs> some like um, split personality disorder because of this, and like not even trying to be like haha about it. Like I've genuinely caught myself being more popsicle than I am like. My other that's human so name. Lit. Oh damn! True. We'll, we'll we'll call him the other human name Poppy. 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 Hey. Poppy. Hey. Hey. Poppy. Hey. Oh, hey. Dad's Poppy. Dad's Poppy. Poppy. Popsicle. Here. Popsicle. Poppy. Hey. <laughs> hey. Let's go. Hey. hey. Popsicle. Poppy. What flavor is you? Yo. <laughs> SoundCloud. SoundCloud flavor. SoundCloud. Hey. What what flavor is SoundCloud? I'm thinking. Orange cream sickle. That's creamsicle? exactly what I'm thinking. Too. Orange, orange cream sickle. Orange. What the fuck? Orange I mean, it's creamsicle? smooth. Back okay. in the day, it was smooth at least. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Orange cream sickle. I mean, I, I I could drink that. I fuck with that. Is that awesome. what? <laughs> orange cream sickle. <laughs> huh. Uh. Anyway, so you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So. Huh. Well, I was just curious because yeah, popsicle. I'm trying to figure out what my favorite popsicle flavor is. I think mine's are the. Uh, I remember when I, I'd have like a an ice cream man in my neighborhood, like paletas, like popsicles. He'd have like these like Lucas mango chamoy Ooh. popsicles. Okay, I that remember was I was like really digging those. Hey, you were a bad kid, huh? That's what I correlate. <laughs> if you were eating those, like One of those Lucas, like, like those popsicles. Lucas, I just thought you were a bad Word. kid, bro. You're like, a bad kid. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Like you just uh, determining how kids are gonna turn out based yeah. on like what they're ordering off of a fucking ice cream, ice cream man. man or ice cream truck. Oh yeah, that fool got the Timmy Turner uh, popsicle. Yeah, that fool's gonna be fucking having fairies and shit. One of the Sonic ones. They had the Sonic the Hedgehog one. I love it. The SpongeBob I, one that was cursed. The eyes were like the cursed. Oh, right? <laughs> they're all cursed. They all were melted. The photo looked fantastic. And like, the eyes look like demon how eyes. Are you melting. You're in an ice box all day. Thanks. What happened? I've been trying to hide this secret, but I just can't do it no mm-hmm. more. I'm rebranding. You are? Okay. I call myself it. ice cream. Ice cream? Ice cream. All right. Bro. Competition. You call myself ice cream. You said you were thinking about cereal bowl. Honestly, if you were wearing a cereal bowl on your head, I would have fucked with it so hard, bro. <laughs> cereal bowl? I fucking cereal. love cereal. That's oh, why. I can eat cereal for True. days and days and days. Yeah. That would have been lit. I was getting Cuphead vibes right now. Cuphead? Yeah, I yeah, can kind of see a yeah. Cuphead type vibe. I definitely think there may be a DJ. A Cuphead? A Cuphead DJ. Oh, real shit? I think so. I mean, I, I believe it, bro. This is a DJ anything. It's DJ Horoscope. <laughs> DJ... That's fire, fam. DJ Horoscope? Future, fam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, damn. True. DJ Horoscope. So let me, let me ask you this. What was like uh, some of the first artists that got you into like, uh, out, let's say dubstep first, but then um, more specifically like rhythm? Okay. So we can do that. Trans- I mean, whoever just got me into EDM, I'm just going to say straight, straight up, it was A-Track. A track just Sick. with uh with any of their releases over on their on their label. Um, but that was like so early and I didn't know what I was I didn't even know what I was liking about it. 
then you know into Swedish House Mafia stuff like that. So I mean, so, I, I kind of got that spectrum of like not too far away from like hip hop and skate skateboard music types of like Nas and stuff like that. Got it. But then a little EDM sp- uh, spin on it, right? And then Sweet Shells Mafia, like everyone else, like everyone knows at least one song from them and yeah. go through the trail. And then you get to Skrillex. Obviously, I I'm no better than no anyone else. Like if you're going to say one person that got me into what helped evolve dubstep, because I can tell you right now, like I knew about Joker way before Skrillex. Uh-huh. I knew about Skrillex. And I still think to this day, Joker is one of my favorite just, dubstep under the umbrella of edm producers from like then then you also have like gemini joker that's Bar9, a, like those artists got me into dubstep and then skrillex just made dubstep bro talk gotcha. like that was my thing that's why skrillex is huge he made dubstep talk yeah so school me real quick so joker is that what you consider like one of the older definitely like the OGs. Like yeah wob- yeah when you he's think definitely of dubstep, i think of wobbles and stuff like yeah that. so again like we had wobbles that made dubstep that's yeah. what made dubstep because yeah, when i think of og dubstep at least when i first started hearing it no, i was thinking right. of like uh like mount eden yeah so is that around the same like so mount eden fell more in the scope of like um like seven lions Type yeah, yeah, like, that's like the kind of the first type of dubstep I was getting into. Which I also Dr. got into. P. Which, oh yeah, Doctor. Like, that, that was like that was my time. But is Joker more before that time or definitely? Around that time? Oh, De- okay. and, and for at least from my perspective, I guess also just you can Google it too. But yeah, he's just older. But like he was the one that was doing it. Like uh, I guess enough to a point where he got big. And, is this in the U.S. or U.K.? I'm pretty sure he's U.K. Yeah, UK, you know he for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's, UK. yeah, he's U.K. Yeah. I, you you could just tell just by the way like the he would have like wah 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 yeah. like just that sound in general you could just tell it's overseas like yeah there's no there was no they other. have their flavor over there and yeah. you know eventually when that flavor gets to a certain point when it gets oversaturated over there it trickles into the United States where then we like to make it into something else. our own pretty much our own yeah we flavor. go oh nice you made that and ours thank you for yeah. doing the hard work now we will <laughs> ask you for and then we'll come back hey y'all have a preset pack for this one word, word, <laughs> we're, gonna need, <laughs> we're gonna need it to do anything over here in america we only have like 20 people that actually make their own music here it's crazy but that's I, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, I'm just saying it. Top school speaking facts out here. Yeah, unfortunately, we're there. So around what year then was like your introduction to EDM? 2009. 2009. Like, like actually like saying, like actually knew what I was enjoying. Because I mean, I was back in 2009, 2008, like I was listening to Rusko and stuff like that too. But I didn't know what I was listening to. You just knew you were Because I didn't have anyone else in my school that even liked that at all. They, They used to be like, what is this? They had one homie who happened to be my old, my, my friend's older brother's drug dealer. <laughs> True. And of and course he was like, he was he's like, EDM, oh, right? you got, you got, you got Rusko playing your car. And I'm like, yeah. Well, Cause I was like driving, I was like, leave my homie's place. Um, and he's like, oh, I, just, I, yeah, no, I haven't heard anyone like Rusko. I'm like, oh, back is that then, who I'm and listening back then to? That was very so significant confused. to Rusko? come across another person that was, yeah, was yeah. Like EDM. rare. It was super, super now rare. it ain't shit, but back then in all night <laughs> to meet someone else and be like, Oh, you listen to Afrojack? Oh, you listen to Sydney That's what Thompson? I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, you listen to Ioki? Joker? Like damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, stuff like that. Back then. Yeah, it was really that rare. It was really that one kid that had the Charizard out of all the kids. Like, <laughs> he was the one kid. You're like, yo, you got it? Did your mom pay for that. I don't know about that, buddy. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yo, but it, it was like that. You'd be like, oh shit, that's sick. Uh, yeah, that's the guy that likes Yu Gi Oh GX. That's, <laughs> that's the guy right there. Yeah, yeah actually. So- <laughs> hey, yeah, so yeah. what's good? Yeah, I don't, y'all gonna like this shit ten years later. Watch. I mean, Facts. yeah, Yu Gi Oh Online's kind of like been like my my thing recently. Really? Yeah. Yu Gi Oh Online's bad. Master Duel. Not uh, to stray from it. Definitely not not sponsored. Definitely worth at least downloading for free and just giving you like twenty minutes. It's actually not that bad. I was on a heavy when Duel Links was that, bro. So was, this is a smoother Duel Links, but it's it? still gonna make you very mad and very upset with everything that happens. But yeah. I feel like it's smoother than Duel Links. Personally, that's just me. Is, yeah. that, is that like on an app or phone? Uh, phone it's app? Oh, it blew up on... Oh, it's like online? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You can do it on your phone too. It, oh, so it's like an app. You can, yeah. Or on the phone. Or, and yeah, if you have a PC or, or a Mac, you can literally right. just transfer all that stuff. You can play on cross-platform. Yeah. Oh, so you like, you know, like, oh, I'm done playing here and you want to just whip it out and start playing. You can. Hmm. But um, yeah, so like around that time, I uh, started getting into that. Yeah. So, but when I started getting into Rhythm, yeah, probably... T- 
2012, 2013-ish because of people like Subtronics, which I wouldn't necessarily say he's rhythm, you know, entirely because he has evolved his sound so much. Got you, got you. But like the person that taught me what rhythm was or is to explain that, like what made rhythm rhythm and not dubstep, that was when I learned about it and what I got so fascinated with because we were getting to that point where I'm hearing the same Skrillex remix over and over again. I'm hearing the same Zomboy remix over and over. I'm hearing the same Barely Alive and Virtual Riot. Granted, Virtual Riot was a little bit different because he added a little something special in his stuff, which eventually turned into his sample packs and his multi-million dollar riches that he made off all that, which good for him because, damn, he he knows how to use serum very well. Get the um, money. Make the, that's what I'm saying. I mean, There's money to be made. Yeah, Michael you got to be creative. Like, yeah. um, in, this, in music industry, there's only so much money you can make off just the, your music that you should take every aspect of what you learn when you make music and exploit it as much as possible. Like, making sense is a whole thing you could teach people. Like, yeah. It, it's literally something. And honest can, to God, you can use a lot of those same exact life skills that music taught you in your day-to-day life. Facts. And I've seen it multiple times happen. I'm like, oh, that's how you would have dealt with like a booking agent, but you did that with your electrician, yeah. which is weird to say, Defender. but like it, that same tone of voice that I know that you use for that, use for that. And I know you normally wouldn't have done that. It's very interesting. Like you do grow as a human being inside the industry. I also think like producing gives you a lot of like, um, it, it makes you really good at remembering things step by step because producing is a thing you really got to take step by step, especially yeah. when you get in the mixing process. You got to do certain things in certain orders to make it sound a certain way. And then because you could hold so much, retain so much information yeah. in your head about one thing, it translates into real world. Like yeah. when you want to uh, like... Because I do maintenance work, right? Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you totally get it. Yeah. Yeah, like, you I'm totally like, understand. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, this is a long process for me to fix whatever I'm fixing. But it's not really that long because these steps is how I would EQ it or, like, make a kick sound good. So it's not literally that many steps. No. You know? So Yeah, like, I get it. Yeah. No, you're, you're preaching the choir. I, I get that. Yeah. That's yeah. good. It's very hard to hear. I don't think anyone's ever actually to, like, described that. To me, uh-huh. that, yeah, that makes sense though. That makes a lot of sense. I get that. Yeah. Hmm. What's uh, what's like uh, some of your favorite plugins and VSCs uh, you've been messing with nowadays? True. Uh, I love everything stock Ableton. The new Ableton has. Uh, God but damn. but I'm gonna be but I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> That's a fine answer though. Serum. Soothe? Yeah. Soothe. Uh, I still use FM8. I'm a weirdo. I still use FM8. It's a fantastic endless synth. I love it. It may sound embarrassing. What is FMA? I don't think I recall. It's native hey, to this was a Ableton, good podcast. Right? I'm going to have to go. Oh, shit. It's, it's very old. It's it's definitely one of the few native instruments. I believe they're still owned by native instruments, man. Mm, okay. I definitely have my I definitely have mine downloaded legally from 2013. Sick definitely. Disclaimer. Sick definitely, disclaimer, yeah. definitely, yeah. Me, the guy with the mask, stole <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? That's how most of the equipment hey, we use in here, does fam. It. Yeah. I didn't do it too. It was made. No, I'm just <laughs> I, I, I'm just you can do group bro. stuff too. And I think Splice <laughs> does some. I think Splice was the first one that made sense to I me. Mean, like you can do the whole like pay monthly for a smaller price for Serum. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I, think- I, I like that they know that you're going to rip it, but may as well get the legit version and then also get the updates, yeah. which is kind of tight. So I remember this one homie of mine got Serum, crack, like a cracked version. And I bought, I bought mine actually because I, Back when it was 69 bucks, when it was brand like, or was it 82? It was something like that. It was super cheap, not cheap anymore. Um, what is it now? Like five? Oh, it's like, it's like, I think it's like almost 200 bucks. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. It's just, it, yeah, if you copped it within last, like, before COVID, you probably got it for a way less, like, lesser of a price. Yeah, I got it super cheap. I got it for like a hundred. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is yeah, still. I, I got it for like the price of free and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but if you, don't have a good crack of it and it updates or there's not a good crack of it, it, it you're kind of shit. You have to constantly look. also to like, if you want to stay updated when you're going through cracks, you have to constantly you may have to always look for another crack for that, that updated. Like So version. what you're telling me, you're fiending as a crack head. 
<laughs> this is what you're describing to me is that you're always hey, looking. Bro, I'm not going to lie. We might be cracked. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'm like man. an edm crackhead i'm a producer crackhead i'm like you know? medium milk crackhead yeah, I'm Bro, like, i have I'm so producer. many cracked uh vsts it's not even funny like, <laughs> dude that was when i first got into producing that's all i was doing was like hunting down like i had a bunch of crack stuff and then the lot of stuff didn't work and that bummed me out but then i realized i had so much of this stuff and i wasn't learning any of it because i had so much of it and i was like uh-huh. how do i use this oh another shiny thing and i have horrible adhd so i'm like boom Drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. What it. does any of this do? Okay, let's start. And then I was like, mm, maybe I slim back down. Really get to know FM8. Really get to know Serum. Um, and then like plugins, like, you know, the really complicated ones, like Sasha's Fattener and Endless Smile, which just take a really big brain to figure out. Those were a lot of long, long nights doing that. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> then what else do we have? Uh, Matt, and then again, Ableton its operator has been in their entire system. It just comes with so many great, powerful things that translate to other VSTs. I mean, if recently, actually uh, I'm lying. Mo- the one I've been using the most recently is vital. Vital. Okay. Vital. And that's because of Ulseal seal and Halcyon doing a, uh, a, set, like a preset pack with them. So, so I asked him, I was like, is it, is it hype? He's like, it's literally the greatest plugin like ever. And I'm like, are you just trying to sell me on it? And he's like, nah. And he's never tried to sell me on anything, like ever. Maybe good fashion, because he's like a big fashion guy, like Balenciaga, like actually owns Balenciaga's type. Oh, cool. right. He's yeah, cool, though. Yeah. He's got a really cool style. Yeah. But um, that's the only thing he'll probably ever sell me on is getting good clothes. Uh, but when it comes down to programs, uh, yeah, he will tell you straight, right in your eyes. He'll be like, this is shit. This is fantastic. Vital is really good. I really highly uh, recommend that. And it's because everything's on um, on that VST. Everything's pretty much um, automated to each other, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, once you play something, move one knob, it's moving everything else pretty Well, much. I mean, you could do that with a lot of other things just based off, like, macroing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that it, one's, like, native. To, like, um, it just comes like that. Like, as soon as you open it, right? It's like, how do I say it? Like, um... Like some of your oscillators, they're connected to each oh, other. Oh yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, some some of them are, and then the but the cool thing about Vital is that it, uh, bare bones it is itself is a super crazy powerhouse. Like, yeah, you can just open it up, and everything's kind of like there for you to like mess around with. But it is a very powerful plugin or synthesizer. Like, I genuinely believe that that program will be. I'm not gonna ever say something will be better than serum because serum is serum. So it's like me telling you that like this has been around for thousands of years and it's just, ne- it's just going to go away one day. I mean, I mean, I mean, blockbuster did. So, I mean, I guess I can't say that. Either. So did massive. I mean, yeah, <laughs> no, it's crazy though. I just bust out massive and I know a few other homies that have been trying to use massive. I mean, it's, really? it's fun. It's fun. It's got a good like default foundation massive, you know, like, if it's, you want to get into it, yeah, absolutely. Like it was, it's it's been used like it, I I honestly sometimes still use it for like just to go in there and like get like certain sounds that I'm not probably like getting from like Serum or Vital or, or sometimes it's also or, what you feel good about. Look, we were talking about um DAWs girls. before. It's whatever you feel comfortable. If you can feel like you can make something, that's the biggest problem with everyone that starts making music. I hear it in my head, but how do I do it? But if you could do it on whatever, see if it's massive for you that's that's power that's so much more power to you than the next guy you know what? i want to talk about that real quick because I, I i know for a fact there's a lot of people that are that listen to edm and they're probably not producers they're djs they can even be DJs. they're just not even a dj they're just like a regular edm consumer and i could tell that that like if they were like to go into the producer game i could tell like they would have some really great ideas but i feel like the translation part like have, actually putting it through a doll like Hearing what you're hearing and then actually like executing that it on the dog. Always, that's the that's the challenge. Like yeah, I, like to come up with the brush. Like to come up with the sick ideas. I think it's uh, I I think that's the one of the, the easier parts yeah. when it comes to it. Absolutely. The the challenging part is actually Stripped translating it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Whether, whether, whether if it's a, a music project or an yeah. idea for a TikTok. Yeah. I, I, it, it's it execution. Go to, yeah, it's execution. It's the execution. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. And. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people, a lot of people that don't know that they're, they're uh, that they have sick ideas, but it's just, it's just that skill or just like again that trans uh, whatever that skill, then that's needed for that translation. I, I feel like 
Like, there's definitely that gap, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that could definitely, like, come up with some sick ideas, sick concepts, sick, sick tracks, and it's that translation part. And I feel like I even also sometimes, even my, my uh, even you, Robert, like, I think we've all sometimes gotten ideas where it's like, I don't know if you guys feel, feel about this way, just, just like because of your guys' production level, but I feel like I've gotten some ideas where I'm like, damn, this would be so sick. But I, 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 right now, my level, I can't f- translate it right now on my doll. I need to like duke it. I, I'm going to take a lot more time than for sure than I if want to. If it's an idea you know, that you like, believe in, I, I always say never marry an, an idea or a song because then you get too attached and you'll never see the light of day. Word, okay. But if it's truly something that you're like, I know that what this sounds like and this, what I'm making right now is not that. Take a minute, take a step back, make some Jersey Club, get back to it. <laughs> J Club will always clear the mind. I hate J to say Club? it. It gets because it gets your it gets your it gets, it's hype. You know, you're like right, oh, this right, is silly. Yeah. It's, it's, you're never gonna release it, but just get your just get your body going. You're like ah, oh, get the get the brain going, and then yeah, like, I got you. Get that second wind. Go back to that track. Nah, I feel. Get you. back to that track. Do something. You know, if it's take a walk around the block, just to get the brain moving again. Sometimes a fresh perspective. I get what you're saying, and it no, is, yeah, it, get, it's yeah. definitely fifty percent actually knowing what you're doing, but the other half is actual. That's that's writer's block. In, in sound designing wise, like that is you. It's like, I know I'm there. Like, it's so close. I just want it to, uh, it, it's supposed to look mm. like this, but it kind of looks like this, you know, I, you know, sometimes take a little, little breather, let, let, let the brain do its thing. And I've gone through those situations where I've had, I, I'm sure we've had those moments where it's like, ah, oh, like, you know, I'll, I'll probably just take a day off, you know, yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah, a day yeah, off. Yeah, like, it, well, let's go for your be, mental it health could too. Be, yeah, you should, it, you it, should do that. It yeah. could be like an hour off or like even just like the half of the day off. But yeah. like going back into it, you're like, oh, okay, like, Huh. The the execution now doesn't seem as challenging now. Or like now I need now I'm more clear of like what I need to do to get to this step to make it sound like how I want it to sound. I, I kind of feel like like people like like Will Seal and Phone On, um, that's what they do. Like I feel like they have so many ideas, but there's just not enough time in the day. Like they got to the point where they can make everything. So they are trying to make, but they have so many ideas coming out. Mm. So and, and I fear that. Like I, I start, I'm starting to see myself do that now. Like I'm, I'm making things that I never thought in a million years I would be able to be like, oh, I know what this, 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 and this does. Take that, move it to the side, do this, this, and this, add them together, flip them around, boom, song that I didn't think I could produce by myself. Just like just straight up without using like a YouTube video of like, true. Oh, so am I missing something on this doll? Like, or I'm sorry, not the doll, like a, like a VST. You know, I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm like mentally skipping a step. Maybe reference someone that's like very dull, basic, preferably with a UK accent for some reason. That's very nice to watch a YouTube video for. I don't know. That's just me, though. That's personally me. Uh, You know, it's just one of those things. So I feel like if you're already dealing with that at at this moment, you're going to get the point where you're going to break through your your wall. You know, just one punch man it. You're going to push through your your limit. And then you're going to be like, shit, I have too many ideas. And they're all coming out and they're sounding exactly how I want. Oh, I have stockpile of music. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think you'll I think if you're already at that point you're at your wall and you're already seeing the light through the wall and you're like, Oh, I'm breaking through this. I truly believe that I've seen this happen yeah. so many times. So what I'm saying mm-hmm. is you're cracked and I had <laughs> <laughs> bring it around, oh, baby. Man. Yeah, for sure. Gee. Well, shit, man, we're going to, we're going to take a little break here. The spotlight podcast, you know, uh, we're going to come back, do EDM confessions. We'll talk a little bit more about your production style uh, before we do your confessions as well though. But yeah, we're going to take a little break, man, and then uh, we'll get right back into it, all right? Hell yeah. Cool. Cool.